This is where it all started. This is what hooked me into all the amazing natural phenomena I explore on this planet. Look at it coming up the street. One of the most intense, unpredictable, and destructive forces of nature. Oh my God. The tornado. Oh, wow. Oh, it's a tasty looking storm. Major circulation right overhead. We gotta go, buddy. All my chase buddies are back down in Tornado Alley looking for monster twisters. This is no hobby. Woo! It's a sickness. You want to see nature's fury? Come storm chase it. This is where it's at. Every spring, the Midwestern United States becomes a breeding ground for all kinds of violent weather. And of course, tornadoes. And every year, I head south to meet up with storm chasers from all over the world. But this year, the storms come early. We're here live in Lady Lake, Florida. If anyone knows the wrath of Mother Nature, it's George Karunas. He's a storm chaser and host of the television show, Angry Planet. When devastating weather hit Florida in February, I was asked to share my knowledge of tornadoes. A direct impact from El Nino. Number one, the best thing is to know where the closest storm shelter is. Your best bet is to get to an And this is just the beginning. Spring is here, and I head for the Midwest. A quick stop at the airport to pick up my storm chasing partner, Mark Robinson. Too much stuff. You really need this much stuff to chase storms? Probably not. Mark and I immediately start tracking the weather, sifting through a mind numbing amount of data to target the best storms. Wyoming spreading northeastwards. Storms are expected to increase as this ascent intercepts the instability axis. There we are over northern Wyoming. Into the evening, a significant tornado threat may also develop during the late evening and overnight period in eastern North Dakota, eastern South Dakota, and parts of Minnesota. Wow. We're definitely talking about the northern fringes of Tornado Alley. We make it up north and meet up with the rest of our chase group. In the, la in the last 24 hours, I've driven 600 miles. Scott McPartland and Charles Edwards are two chasers I regularly travel with. Charles runs a storm chasing tour company, and Scott is a well-known storm videographer. Then we would have been right there, but you know, who knew at the time? We're in uh, uh, Murdo, South Dakota, along with every storm chaser that has ever chased a storm. Well, it's turned into a complete storm chaser zoo here today. We've got the Doppler on wheels truck. We've got the tornado intercept vehicle. And these crazy filmmakers from California, they're actually trying to drive this thing into the path of an oncoming tornado. This town is completely overrun with storm chasers right now. It's a bit too crowded for me. I think I'm going to head out to the outskirts of town and wait for the storms to start firing up. <laughs> what kind of mileage that thing gets. The potential for tornadoes right now is fantastic. I never would have believed it, but the Badlands is the place to be for storms right now. Yeah, it doesn't look good at all, radar though. But chasing here has its own set of challenges. Yeah, the road is about to run out up ahead according to my map, so we'll go up to the end and find a spot with some good visibility and see what our options are. We find our first storm quickly, but roads in here are scarce. Well, okay, and then we sort of yeah. stops. Okay. So the choices are sort of limited. So we're going to have to go back the way we came. Well, I mean, it's coming up this way. Just wait. Yeah. Just watch it. <sighs> Run out of roads. No more roads. So we watch. Wow. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> it's thinking about it. Now this is a crazy, ugly, nasty looking storm. Green in the clouds, beautiful signs of rotation, very clear, tremendous lightning right now, so it's very, very dangerous. Oh yeah, crazy. Ah, yeah, what do you think, right. Mark? I think this is possibly the coolest storm. This has got to be the best storm I've ever seen. OK, the lightning danger is getting kind of high. We've got strikes on either side of us. Seeing another, looks like another development of a wall cloud. We're looking. Of course, increasing again. It's starting, so it's beginning to cycle then. Yeah. We have a distant tornado. It's on the ground in South Dakota. There it is, way off. The storm is actually moving this way, but the road network is not so good, so I can't get any closer right now, but I can see it. There's a cone shape coming down with debris on the ground. It's my first tornado of the season. This is absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah, you know it. We're gonna get caught by the huge hail. We gotta go. I just got my first South Dakota tornado. All right. The storm system passes, and in its wake leaves blue skies for us to explore the area. We check out the mysterious Devil's Tower and the enormous mountain carving of the Native American hero Crazy Horse. Fashioned with dynamite, the work has been ongoing for almost 70 years. The forecast has turned nasty again. So now it's time to head south, deeper into Tornado Alley. You know, even if you go over to, you know, if we do choose Iowa, say, assuming this doesn't change too much, if we do go to Iowa, that's still at least in a moderate. And parts of northeastern Minnesota After some successful tornado chasing in the badlands of South Dakota, the storm systems are dissipating. But further south in Tornado Alley, things are starting to heat up. Rapid evolution of a severe squall line with frontal forcing. Yeah. There we go. So down south is going to be a raging squall line. I don't know. <laughs> well, we got about 45 minutes. So we saddle up and head towards Kansas. Uh, where's the core of this? We're pretty close to the front of this thing, so it won't take us long to overtake it. There's more development back here. Yeah. Let's go! That thing looks nasty with a capital N. <laughs> this thing looks great, but it's a serious lightning danger. We're just southeast of Mooresville, and the tornado sirens are going off in town. I can hear them in the distance. There's something suspicious in the rain here. It's hard to see, but this storm is a discreet storm that's sort of broken away from the line. Intense lightning. Yeah, the wall of rain's going to keep coming this way and this way and this way. We've got to keep sort of stair-stepping ahead of it. The first tornado warned storm has just passed off to the northeast, and now here's the next storm in line. It's coming this way. These storms are moving so fast today. It's hard to keep up. What we're hearing in the background we think is hail roar. And a hail roar, uh, if you're close enough to hear it, you're close enough to the huge hail. And <laughs> hear that in the background? <laughs> it's basically all the hailstones knocking up against each other up in the sky and hitting the ground. Yeah. With the speed of these storms today, we're going to be really careful not to uh, get ourselves caught in that. That'll, that'll ruin your day real quick. What does the latest scan look like? We're going to make our decision based on this one last scan. All right, let's get cord. What do you think? Make a decision now. Yes. Scott, I want you to look at this and tell me what you think. It looks like the hook is going to pass south of town. 
Yeah, is it's it three and a half inch estimated hail size? Three and a half <laughs> inch. Okay, I'm all for getting cored by this thing in town if we can find a suitable shelter. What kind of warning? Tornado. That's what I thought. Hey, this storm has gone tornado warned. Sirens are going off in Mooresville right now. We've got a mezzo indicator on it, possible two inch hail. That's the mess. And radar indicated tornado warning. Mark! The hook's gonna pass south of town. Let's go into town and, and get the shelter. We gotta go, buddy. It's a solid wall of rain. Solid wall of rain approaching. Let's go! Rain right there. take shelter from the hail in a gas station. This is the best. This is what storm station's all about. It's the best adrenaline rush. There's more coming, apparently. Charles says the biggest part of the core is still to come. So I'm hoping for some bigger stuff. OK, so the worst part of the core has passed to the north of the town. So what we're going to do is get on the interstate highway, go east, and then north. Very dark out here, except for the strobing and the lightning. Tremendous lightning now going off in the distance. And you can hear the tornado sirens going off in the distance. It's a big storm, lots of lightning, continuous strobing lightning. We're too late for any more action tonight, so we keep driving to reposition for tomorrow. We drive all night, and we're right back in it. A huge line of rapid firestorms is formed, and we hopscotch from one shelter to the next to stay out of the hail, pounding rain. It's relentless, but this is what we came for. These are the days chasers live for. Completely soaked. You look, like a, soaked. You look like a drowned rat. This was like our fourth or fifth big storm of the day, and we figured we'd ride this one out under an overpass. Now, typically, you wouldn't want to do this if there was a tornado bearing down on you, because it's quite dangerous. But there was no tornado warning on this storm, just lots of wind, hail, and big time rain. Oh, it was fun. That was like storm number four or five of the day. I've totally lost count. Time to get ready and see if there's another one coming. Oh, man. You do not want to have this happen to your car. <laughs> Seek shelter immediately. That is crazy. Where there are storms, you'll find storm chasers. Always with their trusty cameras. Prospecting for the perfect shot. And one day in rural Kansas, Scott McPartland struck gold. Uh, the fateful day of Attica, Kansas. Yeah, that was uh, May 12th, 2004. Around 5.30 that night, we uh, noticed the first tower that went up. It was literally just one cumulus cloud on the horizon, right on Route 160, with a road going straight to it. So we just got on the road, and we were literally driving right towards this thing. There is serious rotation here. I think I see a funnel. 7.30, 8 o'clock is when we got into Attica. As we pulled into the town, you could already hear the tornado sirens going off. And we pulled over on the road, uh, just east of town, right, and you could see the tornado forming in the field. Look at the spinning motion in this. At this point, uh, the general rule of thumb is if you don't see it moving to the right or to the left, just getting bigger, 
it's a good bet that it's coming towards you. I remember setting setting up in the back of my truck. We were pulled off the road, and I literally just smacked it on the tripod, hit record, and zoomed in. Tornado crossing the road, a quarter mile. There goes, look at the house. And the second I zoomed in, I saw what, at first I didn't realize what it was, but as my eyes focused, I could see that it was uh, roof shingles starting to come up off of a house that was just south of the road, and the tornado was heading right towards it. You could see the inflow jet c screaming in. And that's when the entire roof just lifted off the house. Oh my God, oh my God. Made one complete revolution around the tornado. The whole house came apart. That's when we actually got horrified. First thing you think is, was there anybody in that house? Storm chaser Scott McPartland recalls getting his most famous shot. Oh my God, oh my God. Did you see that? The whole house came apart. Uh, we were initially were told that there were no people in the house, that it was under construction, there was nobody in the house. Uh, when in fact there were two people in that house, uh, luckily for them, they had a concrete basement, uh, which they had taken shelter in. So there was, they were completely unharmed and from what we understand, unaware of what was really going on above them. It was only when they saw the video that we shot that they realized you know like you know what it was actually going on above them uh, the bonuses from that day that was was that nobody was hurt but without a doubt when when you see something like that happen uh, with your own eyes you know it was all inspiring but at the same time horrifying uh, to see somebody's house literally go from a beautiful house to completely demolished it had to be five or ten seconds that this all happened within storm potential in the Midwest today is incredible. Big, nasty, churning supercells, just the way I like it. We've got a large convergence of storm chasers here. What brings us here? Well, that. to it, which can mean big hail. I can see an area of rotation behind me here. That's the mesocyclone. That's the area of the thunderstorm that's rotating. This area over here, you can see the rotation in the storm. So if a tornado develops, it's going to develop right here. Oh, lightning. Rain's starting to come down. We're about to get creamed, I think. I'm tempted to move on and get a little bit closer. Yeah, so am I. I'd love to get closer. We'll look at a bit more data here. Storm now has a very good hook shape. There's some clear signs of rotation in it. I'm very encouraged by that. And of course, it's my birthday, so I want to see a tornado on my birthday this year. I think I'm going to get my wish. Today is my birthday, and we're tracking a potentially huge tornado. All right, north or south? South, south, south. South, south and blasted. But a nasty road network and the threat of huge hail makes it tough to get at and risky. But I'm determined to see a tornado on my birthday. Tornado! Oh, tornado's forming right over here, right off of the left-hand side of the car. Right here! We're gonna get really close to this one. <laughs> Birthday tornado! Crazy, there could be another tornado forming right here. Major circulation right overhead! Right there! Just watch this tornado form. 
Could be another one forming almost right overhead. If you look here... We've cut our escape too close, and now we risk getting cored by huge hail. See the debris? It's raining down right on top of us. We race to try and beat it, but it's too late. As storm chasers, we all share a common passion for seeing these incredible forces of nature up close. We also witness the pain that Mother Nature inflicts on the people of the Great Plains. On the night of May 4th, 2007, our chase group was just five miles from Greensburg, Kansas. When a devastating EF5 tornado almost completely destroyed the town. A grim reminder to me of how dangerous the natural forces of this planet really are. 